On this episode of MSU Today, all about the college admissions and application process, particularly at Michigan State University. My name is Johnny Ambrose. I'm the Executive Director of Admissions here at Michigan State University. I'm honored to serve in this capacity. Uh, I've been Executive Director now for about a year and a half, uh, but I've been with the university for uh, almost 18 years. And so prior to coming to Michigan State, uh, I was at Mary Grove College, where I served as admissions counselor, senior admissions counselor, uh, worked my way up to director, and eventually was appointed dean of students before transitioning to come here uh, in 2008. And so uh, the world of admissions is an interesting one, which I kind of backed into. Uh, and so I was uh, working in corporate America and uh, was really looking for something new to do and was really involved in sales. And so um, I never thought of college admissions as a way to utilize my skill set, but everything I did in that time from graduating from college and working in corporate sales uh, has benefited me since I got into the profession, and so uh, I've really enjoyed it. But being alongside aspiring young scholars and young people uh, is what keeps me involved and engaged in it. And so there was something about it for me in terms of college. Um, being a first-generation student, which a lot of people, it still shocks me that so many people are first-generation, um, especially after all this country has gone through and all the emphasis on education. But um, in that space, I just remember losing my dad my first semester freshman year. And he was my muse. He was the reason I did everything. And when he passed away, I had to figure out what I wanted to do for myself. And so I spent the next six and a half years at Western growing up and learning more about who I was as a person and what kind of human I wanted to be. And not only the things that he and my mother taught me and and my other experiences, but figuring out how to use those things to become an adult and and to become a a citizen and those kinds of things. And so, um, but there was just something about college and being there. So it was this great equalizing classroom that no other space when you leave high school can you go into. Um, And it's diverse in the experience that you get. You can come in with a mindset, I'm just here to get the degree and you get it. You can come in with, I gotta find myself and figure out who I wanna be in life. Um, You can come in as an athlete. You can come in and even say, I'm only going to be here for a minute because I have a bigger mission and other things that I want to get out of life. But ultimately, it is a place where you can make mistakes and get up from them. And they don't hurt as much as when you're just not in college and you make the same mistakes. And so it's for me, that was one of the greatest things because I was able to to make mistakes when I didn't have anybody to tell me what else to do. I had to pay for them, but I didn't pay for them in the same kind of way. And so for me, it just became, again, this wonderful equalizer of understanding how the world operates and learning some of the larger lessons that never came in the classroom, but essentially came outside of the classroom and networking and just the power of um, understanding the role or the games or how how do businesses make money um, and, and being in that kind of space and, and working with different people is what made ultimately the difference for me so you know fast forward and I come back now I'm working for a college as an admissions counselor and I'm thinking I'm only here to get my master's degree I got to get this and get back to supporting my family um, it was amazing what happened for me when I was there, but I had one of those crystallizing moments that just said, this is where you belong. This is where you've been working to get back to this space, and I had no idea. So um, this is where I'll be as long as the industry will have me. What a great answer, John. And before we bring in Danny and Nadia, uh, I, you probably go to conferences on this too, and you've been hitting on it, but what are some of sort of the challenges and opportunities both in the admissions world, we hear about a decreasing demographic of college-age kids, but just what sort of the state and future of things? The landscape is so fraught with pressures right now for my peers and myself uh, when it comes to thinking about um, the, the college admissions world. Everything from affirmative action uh, to the cost of education 
um, to the apathy that families are now having about whether or not college is even a reasonable investment. Um, you know, even the K-12 preparation, how prepared are the students coming to the institution? Um, you know, because we worry about things like retention and graduation rate, and everybody's trying to help us figure out how to be different than we are. And and so there are so many different things that are in, involved, everything from AP scores and, you know, being test optional and all the things that I know that they, they worried about. But there's a there's also a greater acknowledgement that young people have than you and I had coming up. We all shared the same types of experiences, but their mental awareness now is at another level that we didn't have. And so that now and the anxiety that they deal with in going through the process is probably the next level of challenge that our industry will have to, to manage and deal with from college admissions. And so there are new things like assured admissions and guaranteed admissions and test optional and, and all these things. I mean, we started with free ap- free college applications where money was a pressure. So now with the anxiety being the next big pressure, people are trying to find ways to make the admissions process more enjoyable uh, for the young scholars. And uh, what would you say are the main stressors for students and parents as they go through the application process? Mostly trying to figure out, um, have I done everything to get in? Everybody, when you apply, regardless, you know, we all, we don't want to see denied. No matter what the application is, you know, whether it's a credit application, an application for a loan for a home, whatever it is, you don't want to see denied. Uh, And I think that's the biggest issue for a lot of the families. Um, When students are applying to, I don't know how many applications you filled out, but uh, when you're filling out 10 or 15 college applications, Russ, you can only attend one. So you filled out the 10, you got to pick. And if you get in the nine out of 10, they're distraught. You got nine choices. You knew, do you, if you expected to get in all 10, okay, great, but you got nine other choices. But that's not enough. They want 10 out of 10. And sometimes I think it's the expectations that are unreasonable with what families are expecting. Now, if you've only filled out three and you only got into one, then I kind of understand the disappointment. But it's rare that I talk to a student that's in that situation. Um, but most times they really claim that they want to come here and this is their dream school, but I know they still have the final choice because even if we offer them admission, there's no guarantee that they have to come or no commitment for them to come. So why don't we have you guys introduce yourselves and a little bit about yourselves. Danny, you first. Sure. So my name is Danny. I'm a third year student studying environmental studies and sustainability and I'm minoring in environment and health. So very similar, but kind of two different career paths. Um, I am a tour guide as well as uh, the sustain uh, the SLE, which is the Student Life and Engagement Sustainability Assistant, um, which has been super fun, and I get to use that sustainability background that I've been studying for so long. Um, so that's super fun. And then I'm also a part of ESSU, which is Environmental Studies and Sustainability United, which is this amazing club that allowed all of us ESS students to come together and kind of just figure out, you know, what it means to be an ESS student, kind of navigate the world of environmental science um, as well as sustainability and this ever-changing world um, and different career paths that we could consider Um, and yeah. Nadia how about you introduce yourself please. All right so my name is Ndi I'm an international student from Zimbabwe I'm also getting into my third year and I am studying neuroscience more on the pre-med track so I'm looking forward to getting to like medical school after I finish this just besides being a tour guide, I'm a tour guide too with Danny. I'm a part of the rugby team, so I'm part of the rugby team, yeah. I really enjoy that, you know. It gives you, like, a group of, like, brothers I play with. You know, we play together. If anything, I'm struggling with something, I need some help with anything like that. There's always someone willing to help me. It's a great way that I found to make friends. So I really do appreciate, like, you know, you have that opportunity to play, you have that opportunity to join. There's so many different things, honestly, around campus that I enjoy. Like, I am part of uh, the Pre-Med Association, and that's a lot of fun, you know. They help you out trying to see all these different opportunities, applying to med school, what you need, 
just you know taking like a little bit of stress away from it helping you out and everything there so i do really appreciate all these different things around campus so as i asked executive director ambrose sort of a little bit about uh the stressors in the applications process from your mind and why you both ended up choosing msu Sure. So I actually grew up, I grew up in this area, so I was very familiar with the East Lansing stores, restaurants, all that fun stuff. I'm very familiar with the area. So, you know, I can't not say that that wasn't a big factor that played into me deciding to come to MSU. Um, but kind of like John said, you know, I applied to many schools, many, many schools. <laughs> so it wasn't an easy decision. It was, you know, there was so many great qualities about all these different schools. And I have this this one speech that I always give on tours. And it's it always ends with kind of saying, you know, it always comes down to the classes that are offered and it comes down to what your interests are. And more importantly, the campus, because I can't stress it enough that there, I, I'm not a city person. That's not something I personally prefer. I know there are students who do. Um, so being able to go, you know, it was a rough time during COVID to kind of navigate these different campus tours myself. Um, so to be able to go to these campus and see firsthand, you know, do I like it? Do I fit in? Is this somewhere that I want to be for four years? Um, it, you know, I, I really took into consideration, you know, living there for four years. And so as soon as I came to this campus, I, I immediately knew like, it was a connection. It's you get a little bit of city life. You get, you know, you have this beautiful land up in North Campus where you can lay out and have picnics or just have a walk. And I've utilized that the past three years and I can confidently say that that is part of my best part of my experience here so far is just being able to have that space to kind of just go on a walk if I need to or navigate the different classes that I have and you know like I said I'm environmental studies and sustainability it's not a very common major around the world. <laughs> um, so to be able to come to an agriculture school that allows me to have all of these different opportunities and to be able to fill my schedule with classes that I want to take, that I'm so passionate about, um, it made the biggest difference. You know, I get to take classes like Intro to Travel and Tourism, which corresponds as a CSIS course, which is Community of Sustainability. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to say, hey, oh my gosh, this field goes along with different things that I'm interested in. You know, I could be working in sustainability within the travel industry. And so kind of just going off that as well, um, you know, I have multiple different courses that correspond with what I'm interested in, but navigate me on different career paths. So that way I have more options. So there were so many different, you know, factors that played into me deciding to come to MSU but I you know and I can't stress it enough that always look at the campus look at your class options and make sure that you're kind of feeling the way or understanding how you feel when you come to a campus before you decide to commit because that's going to play a big role in the four years that you live there. Russ can I ask a follow-up yes question? you may I'm, I'm interested how did you get interested in sustainability? So I, that's a really, thank you for that question. I love hearing that. But um, I, I didn't know for so long. I spent all of high school just absolutely confused. I took marketing courses. I took, you know, business related courses thinking that that was the only path I had. And so I had actually taken an AP environmental science course. And that, I mean, the teachers make the biggest difference. Professors make the biggest difference. And I have never loved a class so much until I took that class. And so I kind of figured, okay, I really like it, but is this something that I want to commit to and have a career? Or is this something that I want to have as a hobby or just kind of a passion of mine and that I can kind of correlate with different career paths? Um, so I, I, I broke it down and I decided that my first year in college, I don't have to commit to a major. This is something that I can go in saying that I want to do environmental studies or maybe I'll switch to environmental science. I wasn't quite sure. So I had decided, you know, I'll, I'll start off and I'll do environmental studies and sustainability and I'll see how I like the classes and I'll kind of go on from there. Um, and then it started getting into, you know, I started learning about climate change and I started learning more about sustainable habits and all of the opportunities we had on campus, you know, our recycling center. I find it so cool and not everyone will agree and that's perfectly fine. But I absolutely love every part of it. I would, you know, I absolutely love being able to see all the different recycling centers and to teach, you know, my uh, my coworkers, my friends, my family. I love teaching them about all the opportunities they have in life to kind of implement sustainable habits in their lives. So I think throughout the years, especially working in the department as well, it's made the biggest difference. And so um, I, I would say that that kind of confirmed to me that that's something I could pursue in the near future. I can really hear the enthusiasm in your voice. Good, good tour guide choice. Nadia, how about you? Sort of, again, some key stressors or maybe deadlines, and 
why you chose MSU as you were telling me before you even set foot here. All right. So for starting off, I know that a big stress, a key stress of myself in particular, it was applying during more for like the pandemic era was really a really big challenge for me. It was, uh, it works a bit differently back home. So our like high school system works a bit differently. So we don't finish at the same time in particular. So by the time I finish, uh, people here are still in the middle of the semester. It gives me a little bit of time, but then I'd have to like apply to the next year on or there. But the big thing with that is just, I couldn't do all these university tours. I was going in blind essentially. I did not know much about it. Obviously, I was like looking, doing the online tours and everything, but I never had a chance to come to campus, never really got a chance to like, you know, feel the campus, feel any of the campuses, any of the places I applied into. And that could be a big thing. That feeling could be the reason you decide to pick a score or not. And another thing is just, you know, getting away from home. It is coming a very far away, coming all the way home. I'm coming by myself. There's no one here. It's basically taking that step by yourself, going forward, traveling by yourself coming here, living by yourself, doing all these different things, that it wasn't too big of a stress of myself because I was kind of used to it. I did a lot of like boarding school and stuff back home. But just for a lot of people, I know that's a big stressor and it is like a really huge one there. But in the end, especially for myself and my situation, you know, I had, I was talking to someone from admissions during my time. They were helping me out a lot. They were just you know, trying to make me feel as comfortable as I could in the end. They were telling me just about the campus in itself. They would do, like, Zoom calls with me, like, on a weekly basis, you know, like, just check up on me, let me know more about, like, campus, any questions I had, like, answered. They were just helping me, you know, navigate during that time period where it was new for everyone. No one really knew what was going on. Everyone's just trying to figure it out. So that really was a big thing for me in the end of it. It gave me a feel of campus. It gave me, like, a feel of the people around here. It gave me a feel of just how Michigan State is in general, how East Lansing is. They were telling me about East Lansing. One thing which they really did, they got me in touch with like other people from like Zimbabwe that were coming out. There were about two more people, you know, they got me in touch with them. They let me know about it. So they kind of, you know, made it feel like it's a home environment, a place I could come, a place I could feel comfortable in. Another thing which I really did think was a big thing, I really thought, okay, this is just like the time they took, the, you know, the, extra effort they went into you know helping me out in the process because a lot of the times when you're trying to decide to go to college and you're trying to decide which one you're going to like i said before you're just trying to decide what place you feel like you're at home what place you're going to go what place you're going to grow at and i really do like the area around there's so much to do like i said before like with the rugby that's just something i do i didn't do my first year i never really thought i would get into like college sports i thought Oh, like high school, you know, you get into it, you finish, you're kind of done with it. Then I came to college, you know, you see all this time you have, you see like, oh, this could be like a nice way I can meet people. It's just like an extra step. It just keeps you, while well, like you do everything, it's like keeping you rounded, you know, you're doing so many things. I go to class, after class, I finish off. I go to like work, after work, I finish off. I go to like rugby, you know, you do all these different, various interesting things to do. And I just like, you know, the campus is giving you the opportunity, you're getting all these different things. So in the end, that's the biggest thing, which is really like tantamounting me coming to MSU, you know, it helped me with my choice, you know, that like feel I got from the end that like, personal like connection that those zoom calls they might not have meant a lot because you know you might just be thinking oh it's a zoom call but to me that was sitting back home i was thinking this person's going through like all this they're like accommodating me you know there's so many different differences there's like time difference they would you know they were like taking time out of their day sometimes they'll call me like it was like 10 p.m at their time yeah. and i was like back home i was like awake it was like you know i was thinking they are doing so much. They're like going out their way to try and help me out. And that just shows, you know, the community. It shows what people are like. It just shows that, you know, when you do go to college, you're trying to just, you know, help each other, like with all these different things. And it just made that decision for me. It helped me make that. It was like so simple for me in the end. I didn't see myself going anywhere else just due to that. So I really do appreciate that effort. And in the end, it really helped me very much. Spartans will. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get into the tour guide? thing and and how is that going if i'm sure that's rewarding sure so i'm actually a first generation student 
Um, so kind of coming to college, it was a really intimidating process. And it's, you know, there's a lot of instructions as far as filling out your application, finding out, you know, what you want to write for your essay. There's a lot of different rules. And so, you know, navigating that wasn't too difficult for me. It was until I decided that I was, you know, when I had moved in, my first year into, you know, McDonald Hall was where I lived my first year. And I just remember, you know, my parents had left. And the first thing I thought of was, what do I do now? What, you know, what happens now? I've, I've got classes, you know, and I, I hadn't committed to any clubs, but I knew about participation, you know, where you could walk around, find all the different clubs. Um, but it hadn't come up yet because, you know, I'd moved in, I think it was like a Thursday. And um, so, you know, over time, I, I became to know campus a little bit more, you know, I'd walk to classes, I got involved a little bit, but not too much. And then I actually had a couple friends who had told me that they were applying to be tour guides. And I thought, well, you know, that that's really cool. Um, you know, there's no better way to get to know campus more than to be a tour guide. And I would love to bring friends, family, other first generation students and walk them around and tell them all the things I didn't know. And I'd like to share that with them. So to be able to have that opportunity to not only have a job on campus, you know, add to that resume, I always love adding to it. Um, but to be able to gain all of this knowledge and share that with, you know, different students on campus. And I absolutely love going home and telling my grandparents or my parents <laughs> or just my other family members, you know, they're like, oh, you need to make us like our own little route. And I was like, I'd be honored. But <laughs> um, so, you know, I get to take that information and I get to take it to my other job and I get to share that with the sustainability department. And just being able to see all of these, you know, incredible families just coming out and, you know, watching the different stops and being able to talk to them about their passions and to be able to talk to these you know future students about why they want to go to college or what their interests are I you know I, I love talking <laughs> and being able to talk to <laughs> others is so much fun so when I get the opportunity to bring a student up and say hey you know why do you want to go to college why do you want to do you know what if it's business or you know if it's um, you know if they want to go into kinesiology or you know zoology or you know and I get to be able to kind of help them and say hey well we have a club for that or you know we have an organization for that or you know have you ever considered this option? Um, so yeah, I'll let Nadi take over. But all right, sorry. so it's pretty much a lot of similar stuff to what Danny right. said. So there are a few different things for myself. So firstly, for myself, just not being able to do a tour of the place itself was a really big factor in it. You know, I wanted to do a tour, like you know, Danny said, you know, go around see all these different places. Another thing is, I wanted to help all the international students, all the out of state people that had like similar questions to myself that were thinking it might be a bit difficult to know, you know, navigate all these different things. I wanted to be there. So if someone's coming and doing a tour, I can actually give them that tour. I can tell them about my experience, you know, just share that experience. I wanted to help people in kind of making their college decisions, kind of like, you know, just thinking about it, seeing all these different colleges, just, you know, pass it on in the way that like I was helped out, you know, by someone taking their time telling me about campus, I wanted to do the same for other people. So I want to take my time, tell people about campus, tell people about my experience, you know, just share it out there so people aren't as, you know, nervous about it as international students. You know, I can give them a first-hand experience of how I've gone through MSU, how I've, you know, all these different questions they might have. I can actually answer them, like, how I did it, how all these different ways went. So that's a big reason I became a tour guide. Another thing with just being a tour guide, like Danny said, I did not know much about campus. I didn't know where anything was. You know, I was trying to like figure it out. And I once I did, once I figured it out, I was like thinking, okay, what's another way when my family comes and visits me one day? Like, what? How? How am I going to show them around here? I know they're building. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I know they're building. I go there for class, but I don't know like half of campus. I've never been there. I don't know all these different places. So I wanted to become a tour guide. So another reason, like when my family visits me, I just show them around. I tell them all these fascinating things about the school that I'm at that they have never seen. My family has never come here. They've never gotten a chance to see it. But one day I do like I do want to like walk around with them. I want to show them when they come and visit me. I want to go around, show them all these different things that MSU has to offer. And John, what about some key, you know, deadlines and time frames both parents and, and students should keep in mind? Sure. Um, most college applications will begin opening in early August uh, and September, and uh, a good date to have all of your applications complete by is typically November 1st. Um, depending on where you are in the country or even the world, sometimes December 1st 
uh, might be another deadline to look out for. Uh, and then finally, there is a national deadline to deposit, uh, which holds your space and makes your commitment to the institution of your choice. Uh, so somewhere along the way, you'll get an opportunity to visit campus. Uh, for some students, they will do it the summer before uh, the senior year. And uh, more and more, we're seeing students wait until after they've been offered admission to the institution uh, to decide to come and, and make the official visit to campus. Um, and so those are pretty much the big deadline dates that we need to worry about. Uh, if you're worried about financial aid and that application, uh, that date is going to move this year from October, I believe, to sometime in December for the opening. So uh, the application used to open January 1st. It got pushed back to October and in essence to give families more time to make a consideration, but they're making some modifications to the FAFSA application this year. Uh, so the feds still need a little time to finish completing the process for the new application, but most likely it'll be sometime in the uh, first part of December. And and for all of you in the admissions process, are, are there either some, some facts you want to reinforce or some, maybe some myths to dispel about the process? I don't know about too many myths, I think, in the the process, but um, one of the key things I think to pay attention to is the admit rate. So if you're really nervous about um, whether or not you're going to get admitted and you're wondering what your odds will be, ask what the admit rate is. Uh, At MSU, we're about 80% right now. So that means 8 out of 10 students who apply get offered admission. So at other institutions that are more selective, like our friends down the road in Ann Arbor, um, their admit rate is uh, more along the lines of about 60%. So five to six out of 10, but they also receive more applications than we do. So that's why it's a little bit harder to get into more selective institutions. Some are as low as 30%. So once you know that, you know roughly what your your timeline is, or, or your odds are, rather, to be admitted. But I would tell you that probably 80% of uh, four-year U.S. institutions, uh, their admit rate is somewhere between 60 and 70%. So uh, for all of you, then, just some overall advice for parents and students as, as we wrap up. I think it's critically important that parents be involved in the part of the process. I don't know about Indy and Danny um, in terms of how involved or engaged their parents were, but always encourage parents. um, When your student is thinking about the process and really thinking about which institutions, give them the things that are critical for you. If safety is a big issue, tell them. If cost is a big issue, tell them. If you want them to stay on campus, let them tell them the things that are important so that they're going through the process because it very much is a family decision um, these days. So it's important for, I think, both the students and the parents to do it together. But typically the students will do the initial search process of just identifying which institutions they're interested in applying to. Uh, and oftentimes if they're not a first-generation student or the parents have a strong affinity Uh, to a particular institution, it goes without saying that school's going to be on the list, Uh, whether it's the grandparents, the neighbor, the aunts, the uncles, the AP English teacher, whoever it is. But if there's a strong enough relationship, that institution is bound to be on the list. And so, but the parents also should should feel comfortable being engaged in the process, not dictating, um, but I think giving their scholar the room to, um, to drive, if you will, a little bit. Um, and beginning to make some of those decisions. Danny, what would you add? Yeah, I, all of those are amazing points. Um, I, I love the part about having this discussion because I'm someone who I need to talk through different things, you know, that are running through my mind. Um, you know, I'm I'm known for kind of, you know, having one idea and just thinking about that one idea. And so, you know, kind of going, you know, as an example, when you go into like the workforce or when you go into a job, you know, it's really important to kind of have this teamwork or, you know, if you have a, a class project, you know, this, this teamwork is so important and having discussions can help you grow. And, you know, that's something Indy had said, too, is, you know, coming to college is this growth period of your life where you get the opportunity. You know, you're, maybe you're in your head at the beginning, like I was, you're thinking, I'm just here for the paper. I'm just here for the degree. And then you get here and you realize this is four years. I can either sit here, do all of my work and not, you know, go out and try and go for clubs and all of that fun stuff. But 
I can, you know, kind of, I can enjoy my time. I can make memories and I can grow and I can, you know, watch this change. And so, you know, to kind of begin this process, I needed those discussions. I needed to talk, um, you know, to bosses, to teachers, to family. I needed those discussions as far as, you know, how do I fill out FAFSA? How do I fill out a different applications? You know, I we had the amazing opportunity to talk to our career services here and they were able to help me with my resume. And that's another discussion I had to have is I didn't know I had something wrong with my resume. Um, so being able to go through those different steps and say, hey, you know, in my head, I can picture uh, you know, I, I need this information. I need this. Is there anything I'm missing? Is there anything that I need to consider beyond, you know, figuring out what it's just telling me on this paper? And applying for colleges, it's it's so similar where you're being told, you know, you have to fill out this application this certain way. But maybe, you know, you should look at what things you're coming into with college are you a part of different clubs in high school are you a part of different groups are you um you know enjoying your time and appreciating where you're at and understanding how this can affect you know your time here so i would just say you know one important thing have those conversations ask those questions you know don't try to keep it to yourself a lot of the time i kept thinking i could figure this process out myself and that wasn't the case all right the big thing i will say uh, is just you know try to remember that you know, you're applying for these different universities, you're applying for these different charters, but you're not trying to like fit a certain mold all the time. You're trying to be yourself. You're trying to enjoy that individual aspects of it. So it's just, you know, like you can put your application out there, you can put something out there. You shouldn't be too worried that, oh, I don't fit this certain, like I'm not this certain person that's like doing like seven clubs a week, that's doing like 30 hours of studying a week. Obviously, so all these different things are important and everything, but in the end, it's just your own experience. It's what you want to make of your experience. It's what you want to do as you're like applying for all these different things. Even when you do get to college, you can be like in seven different clubs like I talked about before. You can be in like one club. You can be in no clubs in the end of it, but it's about like how you want to do it, how it will go for yourself personally. So it's not worrying too much as you're going through the application process that I don't fit like this certain narrative. You're trying to put yourself out there. You're trying to be, you're trying to put your own application out there. You're not trying to like put someone else's application in some sort of way. So it's about putting your own like essays out there, your own like story to tell because everyone has a really fascinating, interesting, different story to put out there. And you're just trying to put that there. You're not trying to be, you know, nervous. You're not trying to be like worried that what if I won't get in? What if you like don't, don't go to the time where you ask yourself all these like what if questions. It's just about, you know, putting it out there, trying it out. It just, it, it that's how I did it. I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, oh, international, this might be, oh, like, what if, what if I don't get in? Like, what's my, it's just, you know, put yourself out there. Just try for all these different opportunities. Just go for the application process because in the end, you never know what might happen. You don't know, like, how it'll go out you really don't know how the story is going to end so it's always like nice to kind of see what's going to happen put yourself out there not be scared not be worried about all the little things some i know some of the things might seem like big in the moment but in the end of the case it's just like it's an application you you have done it you've gone there and as you sent it in you just like you know you can compose yourself you can think about something else and you wait until your decisions it's not too much like i was worried about that all the time i was like looking at my computer every single day like trying to wait for all these decisions i was like oh am i gonna get in like what am i i'm just telling you just you know you can put your application out there once it's out your hands it's no more in your hands it's just for you to you know wait and see what's gonna happen so that's the last thing i'll leave you with there i also do agree with the fact that you know when your parents are involved when you're getting all these out from like your guardians whoever it is uh it's they're not driving the car for you essentially they're just you know giving you tips giving you advice because in the end it's about making your own decision with what works in your circumstances and i just really do like the fact that john brought that you know when you do go through this that discussion period it's very important so you can like see what is going to be going on forward like you can see you can make your part forward there russ indy and danny made really good points it's so critically important to be authentically you. Um, for years, students heard, oh, you got to be well-rounded. You know, you got to be in sports and music and the arts and, and show that you're this kind of student. Today, we, we just want to see who you are, and we want to hear and see what you're passionate about. 
So if it's sustainability or if it's neuroscience, I want to hear all about what you've been doing to prepare and and how and why you're interested in that because that's going to tell me a lot more about who you are than telling me you're captain of the rugby team and you're also on the chess team and you know you volunteer 48 hours a day and you know <laughs> you do all these things and that's not really who you are or who you really want to be so be authentically you in the application um, be authentic utilize the personal statement area to tell us something we don't know about you because that's the one thing that really stands out in all applications of being unique and your opportunity to really show and display who you are. And too many students um, take that position for granted and tell us more about the same stuff that's already in the application. So typically in the first paragraph, I know how much more intently I'm going to read the personal statement based on what they start with uh and you don't have to use a quote that's a good myth um (laughs) that exists that if you quote your favorite person um that it's going to help you know your your piece stand out we we don't need to hear quotes from your favorite authors or public speakers or, or or you know stuff like that um but have a really strong opening and a really strong closing in your personal statement you know just by way of a tip but Sometimes we don't require recommendations at Michigan State, but there we do. We take them if they show up. And I heard a story about a young man who had a letter of recommendation to an Ivy League school in his college application, and it came from one of the most unlikely sources of any letter of recommendation. It came from the janitor at his school, and his janitor wrote about this young man's character and said that he he knew the names of every janitorial staff person in the building and would speak to them. And he didn't work on the janitorial staff, but he was in a a sense into sustainability, but he just liked helping out. And so when his peers would drop stuff or leave trash on the floor, he would go behind them and pick it up and put it in the trash can. And so that letter of recommendation spoke more to the character of who he was than a letter coming from a counselor, uh, um, uh, um, the principal, you know, a congressman, a senator, the president or CEO of some corporation. It really spoke to who he was, and it gave that admission staff a real opportunity and insight into who this person was as a person and not, you know, little Johnny, little Susie. That's, you know, that's actually a question I I don't get very often as far as, you know, getting a letter of recommendation and kind of being, you know, in school for three years now in in college, um, you know, I'm learning more about letters of recommendation and the people you surround yourself with and the professors that you have connections with. And, you know, when I go on tour, that's something that I like to tell other students, you know, make sure that you're making these connections, make sure you're going to these office hours, you know, professors are there, they want to help you and not only help you, but they're there to help you if you have any questions about career paths. I actually just had a discussion yesterday with my professor and I said, hey, I, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm in this spot where I don't know what path to take. I don't know where I'm going to be in the next five years. I don't know what career I'm supposed to look at. I just know what I'm passionate about. And, you know, to be able to have a professor who is so willing to, you know, kind of sit there with me and say, hey, you know, I know some people in, you know, X, Y, and Z fields. And I think that, you know, that could be something you could consider. And I think it just makes the biggest difference with you know not just spending your time in in high school and in college focusing on all of these things that look good on resumes but that you're understanding these relationships that you're having with staff with teachers with professors with everyone um, because it makes the biggest difference and you know and these are also people who if you're like me when you're writing these essays and you're you're having a hard time kind of figuring out you know who am I you know why what do I say about myself you know what I feel like I'm everyone else I feel like my qualities are very similar um, you know I don't know what sets me apart um, but these are the people that, you know, you're surrounding yourself with who can say, hey, you know, well, do you remember, you know, you, you really like to do this at times and, you know, kind of get the ball rolling there and start thinking, yeah, you know, these are the things that I like to do. These are hobbies I like to do. This is what sets me apart. So I think that's incredible that that's a recommendation. Danny, you made a great point earlier about the mistake you made on your resume. And that goes to my point earlier about college is that space where you can make mistakes, right? So imagine not being in college 
having a resume that has errors on it and not getting callbacks for interviews. No one's there to tell you you made this mistake. No one's there to help you correct it. You've got to almost self, you know, because, hey, I got a resume. And you hand it in and you don't realize the error that's there. And it may not be misspelled words. It could be something simple. It could be something very dramatic. It could just not be formatted well. But to get that corrected and fixed and now being able to hand it in, you should start getting callbacks. And she did. The other piece that she's talking about in terms of just this is a big myth because you come and you go professors and in college don't care about you like your high school teachers. And that's incorrect. The professors at Michigan State are here to only not only guide, but to help correct, to help, you know, be a counselor, to be a listening ear. But you can't bring your high school self. You have to bring the young adult self that you want to be and approach them as a young adult. Now, that's not every professor, but that's most of the ones here. That's most of the ones on most campuses. And they want relationships with students. They don't want that, you know, they want you to engage. They want the learning environment to be vast. And they know that students have different lived experiences that add to the richness of the learning in the classroom. So when you have folks who come from Zimbabwe and nearby or even far away, this all adds to the learning environment in that particular space where we get to learn about each other, but we get to learn from each other's lived experiences. And that changes things in terms of how we go about it. But that's the other beauty about being here at college. You don't, I wouldn't, I don't have anybody from Zimbabwe in my neighborhood. I don't, I don't even have anybody from East Lansing in my neighborhood. So, you know, this is the beauty of it, you know, and then you go to these spaces and I find out, we got a connection because your mom went to the place that I used to work and graduated from there. So it's being in spaces like this on university campuses that help people understand how small the world can be through relationships and connections and and the ability to network and just to, to expand that network in such a finite space as a college campus. For more on the college admissions and application process at Michigan State University, visit admissions.msu.edu. I'm Russ.